Hey everybody, welcome back. Next chapter real estate. Today I've got an awesome guest. Her name is Lynn Toomey and she's a financial life coach. And I am sure a lot of you could use her advice, especially when you inherit a property, whether you should sell it or if you do sell it, what to do with the funds. But anyway, Lynn Toomey, I'm so glad you're here. Hi, Annie. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Yay. So you, I think, are going to bring such a wealth of knowledge to a lot of my audience that really a lot of times their inheritance is their retirement plan. Um, so tell me a little bit about what you do and how you work with your clients. Yeah, sure. So I actually own two companies. One is Her Retirement, which is what you see behind me. And that's where I focused on educating women primarily and coaching them through what I call a retirement readiness program. Because so many uh, women either have a lot that they're, you know, doing and bringing to the table, they've saved, they've, you know, worked hard, and they're like, okay, well, what do we do next? You know, so they're not really sure what to do next. They want to leave their corporate profession Maybe they do want to retire. You know, they want to start doing more gardening and start playing with the grandkids and traveling. And then there's other women that want to redefine retirement. And maybe they, they don't really technically want to retire. They want to start a business or they want to do, you know, start a nonprofit. What it, whatever it is, whether you want to fully retire, semi-retire, never retire, her retirement is about educating you about topics that you just might not be familiar with. We take a complete inventory of everything you have. We identify your financial gaps, your risks, your opportunities. We really give you full insight into what you have and what you might be missing well before you get to retirement. So you can fill those gaps. I say assess and address the gaps is really number one. <laughs> a lot of women, you know, we've never retired before, so we don't even know the questions to ask. Cool. Yeah, so I have a master class that I teach. It's a free class that I teach, and then I have a seven to eight hour master course on demand that you can take. Um, I have a book called Retirement Solved that you can purchase on the Her Retirement web. Um, I have a lot of other resources, a social security kit. I have an estate planning kit, lots of information and materials to help you, as I say, know more, have more, and live more. That's my my motto for Her Retirement so that's on the her retirement side. I also co-own a financial advisory practice. We have a couple of CFPs on the team. And so really that's about, okay, you got a 401k. How are you going to create an income for life from that 401k? How are you going to reallocate that 401k? How are you going to cut yourself a paycheck from that 401k? Um, how are you going to make those social security decisions that need to be made? Medicare, tax planning is huge. You know, so many people are like, Okay, Roth conversions, I've heard about them. Do I do a Roth conversion or, you know, how do I pay less taxes? How do I claim, you know, how do I figure out Medicare? Like that's just like a whole another thing. Estate planning. So that's really one stop for all your retirement planning needs, regardless of how you plan to retire. Or as I like to say, it's all about living a work optional lifestyle is the ultimate goal. Right. Oh, gosh, I love that. Yeah. You don't have to work if you don't want to. So those are the two companies. And, you know, the fact of the matter is that our population is aging. There's going to be, you know, $30 trillion in assets transferred from baby boomers to Gen X and millennials. And while I say to people, an inheritance isn't a guaranteed income source in retirement, it will potentially be an income source for many, many people and women. Um, you know, the, the average age of widowhood is 59. So yeah, it's so young, but the fact of the matter is you could be inheriting, you know, your, your spouse's, your spouse's assets. And yeah. the question is, are women in the case of her retirement and people, are they prepared? Right. And you probably see it when people inherit a house and they sell it, they might become overnight millionaires. Yes. And, and it's like the first thing you want to do with it. What do I do with it? It's like winning the lottery, right? Totally. Yeah. So what do we do with it? So while I say to people, you know, when we talk to people and they say, well, I, I'm a perfect example. My dad has a lot and, you know, I have siblings. And when he passes, assuming he passes before us, who knows at this yeah. point, you know, we'll, we'll get an inheritance, you know, closing in on 60, I'm like, I'm not counting on that. Like, it's not part of my plan. You know, if it comes, it comes. 
I'm going to, you know, have a plan for what I'll do with it. I don't know the amount. I have no insight into that because he's not very forthcoming. Whatever it is, to me, it will be gravy. You know, it will be what do we do with it when when we get it? But for those people that have more surety, you know, they've talked to their parents, they know what they're going to get, they know the house is going to be sold. You really need to to plan with everything. With everything in life, I think you need to plan, particularly with with money. You want to be very intentional, purposeful, and and have the plan. Like invest in a planner if you can't figure it out yourself, for sure. Yeah, but gosh, I think it's one thing you should really hire someone to help with because there are so many moving parts when you're looking at retirement, like you said, but 401k, social security, heritage, maybe life insurance from a spouse passing, like there just could be a lot of different pieces. And I do think I would say like a confused body does nothing. And it's like, I think it's, it's the same situation with people, the options, they just get confused with so they just sort of limp along thinking they'll just take a little here, a little there, and they really have no plan. So I think having you as a resource, oh, it's huge, you know, someone that can kind of look at the big picture. Yeah. Yeah. Looking at the big picture and then, you know, tax planning is a big, a big part of it. A lot of people don't understand tax planning and a lot of CPAs, good CPAs, but they look a lot of them look historically at what happened and they do tax returns. They not really focused on retirement tax planning. So like I kind of equate it analogous to you, your realtor, but you focus in on senior market and inheritance, right? Tax planning is kind of the same thing. We are very focused on how do you efficiently take your inheritance or how do you leave your money and your property efficiently in a tax savvy way to your family and then how do you receive that and what do you do with that money or property in the most tax efficient manner and i think for the for the gen x population that will inherit baby boomer assets like you said at the outset this could be a big part of their retirement so you want to be really really smart with what you do with that because the whole idea of retirement it's not really about how much you have in assets, because if you think about it, you could have an asset. We talked about this earlier. You could have an asset, but if it's not producing income and income is what you need, income in retirement is more important than assets. Like with housing, turning that dead asset, your home, you know, you, you have housing wealth, you can turn that into income. So it's really about, don't tell me how much you have in assets. Tell me about how much income you're producing and is it enough to fund your lifestyle? And so that's really the the strategic, I call it kind of part soul searching, part numbers crunching that we do with people um, in their later years. Yeah, I know. It's the later years is catching up to a lot of us. And we're like, wait, what? That includes me. <laughs> when did that happen? I still feel 25 in my mind. Yeah, exactly. I think a lot of us are like, wait, how did I get to be this age? And I don't know what I'm doing. So it's so great to have you as that resource to start the planning, no matter what age, if you haven't started yet, just get on it. Uh, but I love that you guys are looking at all the pieces. It's not just one aspect, you know, super valuable information. And so can you help people in any state or how does that work? Yeah, we can. We pretty much, because of COVID, kind of the silver lining of COVID is we, we, we're we located in Massachusetts, so a lot of our client base, historic client base was Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New England states, and then, you know, inevitably North Carolina, Florida, because people that were clients here are relocating. But with COVID, we started teaching retirement planning classes online. We teach um, typically once a quarter, we teach a six-hour class online about retirement planning, and we do that over Zoom. And we advertise it all across the countries. Oh, wow. We, I wouldn't say we're we're licensed in every state, but you know, um, what was the new state recently? Arkansas, I think. So you know, it takes like a week to get licensed in that state. Oh, okay. So um, it's pretty simple, easy process to do. And you know, we meet someone and they want our help from a state we're not licensed in. We get licensed. So yeah, as long as people are comfortable meeting us over Zoom. And then for people that 
are really kind of hell bent on, you know, I want to be able to go sit across the table and actually shake the person's hand, give them a hug, <laughs> whatever yeah. it is. We um, are starting a network of your retirement advisor approved um, specialists who we can refer you to, uh, at least in your state. It might not be, you know, in your community down the street, but at least someone that could potentially meet with you face to face easier than we could. But you know what? Today, everybody's doing stuff online. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And I think so much is finding the right person. You know, yeah. even if they just took your, your six-hour course first, they'll probably, oh my gosh, I like the way they're thinking, and then hire you. That's a great avenue to get to know your style and how it works, so probably. Yeah. I mean, one of the, we were just talking with a client. I was talking with a prospect, I guess, at, at this point. I don't know, like a month ago, and she was okay working um, on the, her retirement program because I call it a retirement readiness program that I take women through, but, it, and it can be with your spouse, also your partner, but her husband was kind of like, well, I'd like someone local and she was okay working with someone, you know, remotely. So what I said was, well, you know, we're going to give your husband the guide to finding the right retirement advisor for you. And if you can find someone local that checks all these boxes, because it's not an investment advisor, it's not that person that helped you grow your assets, because that's really what they have focused on. They don't have the retirement training and, and focus, right? So I'm like, take the checklist. If you can find someone locally, great. Our, odds are you won't, because there's just not a lot of people. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I haven't heard about it much. Yeah, it's just um, like like you were saying in the real estate market, you know, people might add like, you know, retirement specialists because they see, you know, 10, 11,000 people turning 65 every day and they're like, I better get a piece of this action. They're, they're not. It's no, just, a, yeah. just an add on. It's not really what they're focused on. So, yeah, and that's so interesting you bring that up as you in focusing on the retirement aspect versus most focus on the growth aspect. And it is, it's got to be two separate things. Um, so that's the yeah, really different strategies because when you're, when you're younger and you're growing your assets, you know, the biggest thing is you, you can be very aggressive. You can have, you know, 90% in stocks and 10% of your portfolio in bonds because you have time on your hands. You can withstand the, the market ups and downs, yeah. you know, outside of, you know, other financial strategies like college funding or saving for a house or, you know, so there aren't, there's not a lack of financial planning that's needed. You could still benefit from financial planning. But as you approach retirement, all you have to do is take a look at my milestone chart. I have a milestone um, chart that I provide to people. And it basically says at all these different milestones, there's a number of decisions, a number of risks, and a number of opportunities depending upon your age. Well, as you age, these become more numerous, right? So there's there's all these opportunities and these decisions that need to be made. Many people aren't equipped to make the, those decisions. I mean, they can make the decision. But they could make a better decision that would improve their financial outcome with some help. Yeah. And it 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 doesn't have to be like hugely, right? You're going to, the idea is fees are an issue in the absence of value. So you have to look at the value that you're getting. Yeah. And if that retirement advisor is going to, you know, help you not leave money on the table with social security you know, is going to secure your your health or your long term care, you know, a long term care incident, insulate you from that is going to set up your portfolio so you don't lose any market. If I mean, you don't lose any money if the market goes down 30 percent, like all these things. The whole idea is a retirement advisor can protect you from these risks. Um, you get an inheritance and, you know, you don't go blow it on a I don't know a boat. Maybe you want to blow it on a boat, but at least you've you've made the the decision with the information. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that fits your plan. The boat is fine as part of the plan, but not if you don't have that plan and then all of a sudden a year later you realize, wow, boats are expensive to maintain and that you weren't prepared, right? Yeah. I had a woman who inherited a lake house and you know, it was something that had been in the family 
and she wanted to preserve those memories of having the lake house. So a typical advisor, you know, might say, okay, you know, we'll just, we'll put that down as an expense because you have maintenance and blah, blah, blah. But I kind of like to go to the next level and say, well, is keeping the house really what you want? Like, this is like a, this is an opportunity to really go deep and discover what you want. My job is to help you go to that next level and try to think about these things. And so as we got talking, she was like, well, it's really the couple weeks in the summer bringing the family together. And I was like, okay, well, do you want to Airbnb a place for a couple yeah. weeks in the summer and use that money? You know, you're worried about your health care. You know, how about we do a health savings account or, you know, purchase an annuity or, or whatever it might be, right? And so by digging a little deeper, she came to the realization that maybe this wasn't something that she wanted to keep. Wow. Um, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Or like you deal with this. I'm sure like I'm thinking about my dad and his properties. Uh, if I co-own them with my brothers and their rentals, I don't know how that's going to work out. I don't think I want to be in business, the rental business with my siblings. Yeah. yeah that's, that's a lot of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I love my siblings. Yeah. I love my siblings, but we're not in business together. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's a whole different emotional piece of, you know, this sibling aspect of who's in charge, who's overstepping, who's taking too much control. You get some weird past emotions that pop up being forced. So you're smart to think about like that. Yeah. I mean, I've even talked with people that have rental real estate, you know, and it's, it's been an income stream and it could be somewhat of a passive income stream, but I always say it's, we do this exercise of identifying your guaranteed income sources and people always say, well, you know, I want to put my rental properties on the guaranteed income side. And I'm like, oh, no, no. Because what if people move out and the house is vacant for six months or a year? And what about those maintenance expenses? It's a job. It's still going to be, you know, do you want to be 70 in the middle of the night getting a call from someone renting? Yeah. You know, it's 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 not all it's, it's cracked up to be. It's potentially, you want to get get rid of that rental property, take the money and do something else with it. But oftentimes people just haven't gone through the, the thinking it's yeah. part soul searching part numbers crunching like you really have to search and and see what it is that you want to do and money is just a tool to help you do that yeah exactly oh, i love this i really do love a big overview of living into retirement years like you said there are a lot of people these days that don't really want to fully retire they just might want to put their job that they've had for 30 years and do some other small business or something, you know, having a plan and something that can kind of help them overlook it all and, and dig and see exactly what they want. I guess a huge resource. Yep. Yep. I well, I love all this, Lynn. I'm going to have all your contact information below. So everybody have a look at our website to different programs. You know, it's never too late to start a plan. Don't think, oh my gosh, I'm too embarrassed. I'm, you know, in my 60s and I haven't thought of it. It's like, start today. You know, time's going to go by. So, yeah. But no matter when, I get a plan in place. Lynn, for fantastic resourcing. So glad we met. Likewise. I think yeah. we connected on LinkedIn, I think. Yeah. yeah. I really appreciate all this insight and love that you're helping people in this aspect. It's so needed. So thank you again, and everyone reach out to Lynn. All right. Thanks, Annie. Okay. Have a good one, everybody. See you next time.